morning. Happy Monday. Today I opened Eastern Thought for Western Mind and it's definitely interesting how the weather and the time of year mirrors what this a reading is that I just happened to pull. First I'll show you the picture. The power of silence. And I feel like this completely applies to um, our weather and how snow creates a silence. Sorry, the light is totally flashing my eyes. It seems contradictory to speak or write about silence because silence is really something to experience. In the experience of silence, we discover deep spiritual truths and we come to know our true self. And this is where meditation, yoga, shavasana, just stillness, mindfulness practice, all of it helps us bring about using silence or um, stillness to create awareness. Silence grows within us, helping us to progress and develop into a very subtle way. Just like a seed, the flower is hidden in the seed and the seed is hidden in the earth. Sunlight touches the earth that warms the seed and the flower begins to grow. Like a seed, we are also full of a great deal of potential. It is not really knowledge or discussion that will truly develop that potential. They help, of course, but it is the light of silence that penetrates very deeply and awakens the potential within, inspiring it to burst into flower. Silence is a space that gives the mind oxygen, allowing the creation of something new, filling life with power and strength. Everybody's religion nowadays is of being built busy, and it's almost a competition, and I do almost feel like social media gives us a a very public display of our busyness. Everyone rushes around doing something, providing something, showing something, and in that rush to be someone, we tend to forget the power and miracle found in stillness. One aspect of meditation is it teaches us to face life from the inside. I personally struggle with stillness and quiet, and I find it very uncomfortable, and that's maybe something I have to look at. Why am I not interested in stillness and quiet? It takes us to the point of stillness where we find the strength to change and heal our inner self. In that silence, we're able to find perspective and insight and a deep sense of in a deep state of introspection. We clearly observe our thoughts, seeing our true motives. When we understand that our intentions are perhaps not quite right, then we are in a position to say to ourselves, hold on a minute. I'll just read one more paragraph. When we use silence to check our thoughts at that level, then we begin to realize that many of the things we're thinking about are not really worth thinking about. Remember, human suffering, past and future, instead of just being now, be here now. At this point, it becomes spiritually economical. In fact, which in fact leads us to become very generous. A lot of energy, precious energy is lost mentally and emotionally on wasteful negative thinking. 95% of our time is wasted on thinking about others, and I doubt they're thinking about us. We go on and on with a string of expectations. It becomes like a hammer of demand on other people's heads. Take a combination of expectations and demand, and what is that equal? Conflict. And the person doesn't even know you're feeling this way, so you're creating all this stress in your own body and mind and heart. And this other person that you are, in your mind, elaborating about doesn't even care. Um, and I'll read one last line. When we learn to become silent to reflect on our inner self, we start feeling satisfied with what we find inside. There is a deep sense of contentment. We become more compassionate in our outlook and start accepting others for who they are. The more we're able to accept, the sooner we find that there is harmony in our relationships. We start saving energy, sparing our thoughts and words. This is accompanied by more patience, tolerance, flexibility, easiness, easiness and lightness. Silence teaches us the art of living. Silence can be misused to isolate yourself, but true positive silence gives us a balance between our outer and inner worlds. I like that, the balance between outer and inner world. So we're gonna do um, this today again. I love uh, visiting random poses because it's a reflection of things that we've already learned. There's P poses just like good books that feel amazing in your own body. And we'll come to the mat, we'll do some of our floor work first to prepare our body for stillness, but also for um, some asana, which is actually also just to prepare your body for stillness. See a message there? Everything leads to stillness. So I'm just making my stacks. And I would say winter after snow is definitely a visual of what should be inside our head, stillness. Come to the mat, taking your time to settle your spine. 
all the way down. Arms by your side. Let's keep them close by today. <clears throat> the concept of containment. So I'm going to bring legs close together. My big toes are touching each other. Inner thighs are touching each other. Arms closed, palms turned up. And I want you to take five inhale, exhale rounds in your head. I will not count it out. I'm going to try to do the quiet, calm stillness. And I like to use my hand pressing the nail down onto the floor with each inhale, exhale round. From here, without opening your eyes, can you line up the soles of your feet and let the knees fall wide open, recline cobbler. Let's take five breaths here, silently. Finishing your last breath round, closing the legs, drawing thighs to chest, hold them in tight, pressing the spine down. Let's take three breaths inside your head. Guiding your knees to the floor on the left, double leg spinal twist. Open that right arm to a T or cactus, anchoring the shoulder and opening up the heart. Two breaths, silently. side, left shoulder anchors, two breaths. Center, right leg in, left leg slides straight, point and flex a few times, fan the toes, and then coming into flex feet, Single leg wind relieving pose, two breaths. Left hand takes right knee over, shoulders anchor, two breaths, single leg wind relieving pose, sorry, single leg spinal twist. Center, knees to chest, little boat. Left leg in, right leg extends, point and flex, stretching the hip a few times, and then drawing in, single leg when relieving pose, left side. Two breaths. Right hand takes left knee over, single leg spinal twist. Two breaths. Okay. 
center. Y double leg when we're leaving pose. Set up for happy baby. Full happy baby. Soles together. Draw your feet towards your knees. Press away to your breasts. Feet to the mat, recline cobbler, two breaths. Close the legs, legs in the air, legs up the wall, point and flex, two breaths. Legs fall wide, two breaths, ankles dangle. Close the legs, strap to the ball of the right foot. Left leg flex and lower, two breaths, adding a bit of resistance with the strap. Press that heel to the sky, stretching the hamstring. Both straps in the right hand, leg out to the side, left arm to a T. Leg to the sky, strap in the left hand, tiny stretch across the midline, wake up that IT band, or take it all the way over anchoring the shoulder at the same time. Center, release, feet in the air again, point and flex. Roll out the ankles. Right leg's gonna lower. Left leg, strap to the ball of the right foot. Two breaths, but a bit of resistance. Straps on the left hand. Leg out to the side. Two breaths. All the way to the sky, straps on the right hand, tiny stretch across the midline, or all the way over. Sky, release the strap, little boat, four circles, and then one last piece, we'll do a thread the needle. Feet land, right foot flex on left knee, open that knee towards the opposite wall, and draw the left thigh towards you. And you'll see some people do this variation with a straight leg. I somehow like to draw the knee in. Turn it into uh, shoelace. So right leg over left, cross the knees and draw the flex feet towards you. And shake it out. Feet to the mat, left foot flexes onto right knee. Open that left hip, drawing the right knee and foot towards you, press the left knee away. Cross that leg over, coming into the setup, or actually you're coming right into shoelace. And shake it out. Let's come into happy baby one more time, so it's almost like a squat, but on our back. Let's take three breaths, we're not moving. If you're not comfortable in happy baby, you're taking hands behind the legs. Flex, inhale one. Sorry, three breaths, I won't talk. And then roll onto the ball on your side. Coming all the way up. Let's do a quick extended child's pose. Or bum in the air, puppy. And coming upright. 
So we're going to do a bunch of different poses. It's kind of like reminding our body about maybe even previous classes or experiences. Oh, I got wild card. I'm going to go with red. Extended side angle. Hmm, love this pose. I'll show it to you, but more importantly, I'm going to do it. So with extended side angle, you can do it with or without blocks. When we do these review poses, I like to do it without blocks. Not everybody has access to them. Right foot forward, bend the knee at a right angle. Left foot is pivots, it's almost like warrior two. And I like this variation. Arm on the forearm is on my right knee, palm turned up, open. And then I'm gonna take that. So palm is facing the front. And I'm going to take that bicep across the ear, palm. Imagine you're tapping the child on the head. And turn and look up the under left bicep. Staying here, or hand to the base of the skull, elbow to the ceiling, or hand to the lower back, shoulder rolls back. Or some of you might even grab that right thigh and do a bind. Upright, and let's do the other side. <laughs> left knee is going to bend, right leg anchors. Left palm is up, right arm up, and then across. So reaching one long line, or hand to the base of the skull, look up, elbow to the ceiling, or hand to the lower back, or try to bind into that left thigh. And I don't want you, but I'm a little tight for a Monday. And then I'm gonna come into seated. Sorry, coming into squat. Let's take two breaths here, silent. Coming onto the mat, we'll do a quick frog to continue helping the hips with our work. So I'm going to take my ankles out, starting in tabletop, walking the knees out as wide as it feels good. I'm going to come into sphinx arms, and I might like to press forward for a bit of a break. Press your bum back to increase the intensity of the frog. Quite often, if you are someone with very loose hips, hypermobility in the hips, your inner thighs, inner hips could be really tight. They can't, inner and outer both can't be loose. Let's take two breaths here. And then help yourself come all the way out, extended child's pose. One more breath. And then come on up. Okay, what's the next color we're going to do? Blue. Oh, we haven't done this in a while. Side plank with hand to toe. Hmm. <laughs> You're going to hate me after this. So coming into tabletop. Step back, high plank. I'm going to shift my weight, eating pretty strong on that right arm. Pivot the feet over. So side plank, or tree, or hand to toe. I'm going to fall because it's so tight. I want to show the other side. Some of us may not like this pose. We haven't done a lot of upper body work in a while. Tabletop, step back, high plank. Weight into the left arm. Pivot. So I'm here, here, or here. <laughs> nice. Ah, oh, I don't know about you, but that tells me we need to do a little bit more work with our upper body. And ultimately, it's stacked bones. It's not just strength. It's also focus. Are there distractions in your room where you practice? Do you not believe in your own upper body strength? Do you not believe in your own ability? Sometimes that piece in our brain sets us off also. Hmm. Let's do red. Warrior one. And normally we do this as part of a series, but today it's on its own. So you're going to come into standing in a mountaintop. I'm going to bring right foot forward, left heel up. Just take a moment here. So you're rooting down that front leg. Arms rise up. Squeezing an imaginary beach ball. And I'm going to show you front on. Everything's aligned. Knee does not go right or left or beyond the toes. What happens in this pose 
Historically, you may have had this cue, right knee stacked, left leg pivots open. And then you would have to take the torso forward. This is really hard on your hips. If I take both hip bones focusing forward, almost like car headlights, it's a lot more natural and you're lifting that heel up. You don't have to root it down. Let's do the other side. Left leg roots, right heel lifts, arms up, squeeze an imaginary beach ball. I'm not really flattening my back. I want to keep that curve there and release. That would be our quickie version. Green. Marici's pose three, and that's with an extended leg. And whenever we do this pose, you know there's different variations. Extended leg, bent leg, both legs bent. Let's come into Dandasana, legs are extended. Right leg is out, left leg over. And because the left leg is the one over, then the left arm is coming inside. I'm gonna grab that arch, move back a little bit further for you. Right arm behind me, sitting up straight, twist. And then I like to counter twist. So you may see this variation with hands here or here, or hugging, left arm behind you. Turn and look over that left shoulder and back to center, roll up the ankles. Let's visit the other side. Left leg extends, right leg over, right arm inside, keep that knee upright, left arm behind me. So you wanna keep glutes glued down, sit bones down, turn and look over the left shoulder. Counter twist. I'm gonna do the, the hug method or the inside method. I'm gonna do the hug method. Looking over the right shoulder, Nice big twist, bringing out the spine, and back to center, roll it out. Mm. Reclining hero. I will show you, but my knees do not enjoy this. I tore my MCL a year or two ago, working with the team at Trails, and we were watching yoga mats outside during COVID, so we could practice outside, and I slid on the soapy water and did the full splits down the hill. And I found, felt something bad happen. I knew something had happened and uh, it is what it is. So I'm gonna come onto my knees. Some of you would have a bolster behind you. What happens if I put the blocks behind me to raise the height? Yeah, I don't know if it's gonna happen. I like to do this variation, knees together, rooting down. I don't have to go all the way back and this is a deep, Quad stretch, shoulder in line with my spine, press the heart up, and I'm sure some of you have children in your life who are going to go all the way to the floor. It's not happening in my body. I just want to stretch the front lines of my body. And I'm going to come all the way up. I know a lot of us with knee injuries, as you age, the knee is such a flexible piece of the body, so delicate. I'm not gonna force you to do something that would hurt that. And until you've had a knee injury, I used to kind of roll my eyes like, oh yeah, your knees hurt. And then when I finally experienced what an inconvenience it is, it is awful, especially if you live in a century home with many stairs. Red. Oh, tree pose. Probably the very first yoga pose I learned, loved, and used to really enjoy. And I know some of you really enjoy these poses of stillness. Interesting that we were talking about that. So coming into mountain, right foot is either gonna come, sorry, rooting down through the left foot, lift the toes, spread them, and I'm gonna look at the ball of my foot pressing into the earth, the heel pressing the earth. Finally, the toes drop down, almost like our hands gripping at the mat like a tree frog. Right foot on the inside or calf. Traditionally, I would have done this variation I'm going to keep it simple and small and stable. Flex the palms, flex the feet, press the palms into each other, engage the glutes, and you're also clenching the inner thighs towards center. Shoulders back, and your eyes rest on something that's not moving. Option here to come to hips, T, warrior one, yoga steeples with interlaced fingers. However, you're able to press to center and stay in stillness. Two breaths.
and all the way down. I'm going to switch sides. You may notice one side is easier in your body than the other. Padabandha. <clears throat> all four points of the foot. Think of it as a rectangle or a shoebox pressing down equally. Left foot on the inside, hands to heart center, or decide where your hands need to be. Two breaths. Release. I'm going to choose a little squat just to help in between poses. Very nice. Red. Triangle. This is regular triangle. If I have to keep getting up, then maybe that's my yoga today. Coming into mountain. Right foot forward. Option is to widen those legs a little, but I'm not bending the knee. I could take a block on the inside of this leg. Open and stack. This is the gentlest on my joints. Some people are flexing and engaging, so the arm is almost dangling. This is using more core. I'm going to come all the way up. Let's pivot. Feet are facing left. Left arm is going to be the down arm. Right arm up. Stretching in opposite directions. Energy moving in opposite directions. Option. Of course, for years I did this variation. No block. And some people may use a block. Better for the sacrum and the hips. And also, if you're a really flexible person, as we age, our joints get looser and looser, even though they seem stiff, you want to put less effort on those joints. And that's where the block comes in handy. I'm putting my effort and energy into an item, taking the pressure off the joints. Let's see. Bridge. So this picture is very funny. Um, we do, we used to do a lot of supported bridges to wind down our practice. I do recommend that if you need something for stillness, but pretend first we'll do it. No, no block. Legs are close together. Walk your bum close to your heels, hands by your side. So we're engaging energy to center as the bum rises. So the root to rise is happening for me. Shoulders, feet, option to keep your arms beside you. Some of you might take a block. I'm going to be doing a supported bridge. Two breaths, saddle in your head. Taking out whatever anatomy you use or blocks. And then I'm going to come all the way back up. So that was a really quick bridge, but I'm a huge fan of bridge. It does fall under the back uh, bend list. Let's do one more. Red. Ha! Eagle. You know I love the eagle. Of course, this is way faster than we normally would do. Coming into standing, arms into zombie, it's great doctor scrub arms. Right into left, fine. Right over left. One side. I never do it this quickly. But the reason my show, my shows, my classes are only 30 minutes or less is because if I do anything longer, it takes way more hours to upload and you won't get it till midnight. Left into right, left over right, sit or behind, <laughs> so tight, and release. Beautiful. What will our reading of the day be today? I pulled out Wisdom for Healing deck and I think I got this at Dalen in Nature's Aquarium but I'm assuming you can order online, probably through Hay House or Shambhala Communications. They have a lot of decks. We have to do that one the other day. Oh, I love this. And it kind of sounds like what we were talking about earlier. Remain centered. Today's lesson, focus on conscious tranquility. No matter how stressful the day is, your intention is to remain centered and calm. Look for the stillness. Your goal is to learn that you can control your psychic energy. And in that case, it isn't meaning, ooh, I'm gonna tell the future psychic. Just the idea that you have a sense of control and you're not out of control. I feel like that would help more of our anxiety as a human race when we're aware that we are not controlless. We actually have some control and responsibility to see what the outcome of our happiness, our uh, security, our uh, fears, we do have a little bit of control.
The good in me sees the good in you. Namaste.